Hey everybody and welcome to my brand new video series. This is Nicholas Dingle here and I'm trying to introduce to you Visual Basic.net 2013. In this video series I really want to go from scratch with you all and start from the people who don't even know anything about programming and get to the point where you'll be able to make full-fledged applications on your own. Okay, The whole point of this video series is I'm aiming towards those students in New South Wales in year 11 and 12 who are doing software design and development. Okay. That's who these videos are going to be aimed towards. That doesn't mean that people who just want to learn programming can't watch these as well. It's just there's going to be a lot of background knowledge in them as well. There's going to be a second playlist I'm going to do on the side, which is going to be theory of programming, and that's going to be directly related to the course. Okay. And before I introduce this video or even more about the series, I want to introduce myself. Okay, because some people probably don't know who I am. My name is Nicholas Dingle, as I said before. I work as a high school teacher in New South Wales in Australia. Okay, and I teach mainly Year 7 to 12 over here. And my primary teaching load is computers. Okay, that's why I'm doing this. Okay, a bit of my programming background. When I was about 11 years old, I started programming BASIC out of my Programming for Dummies handbook, which I thought was fantastic when I was a kid. I soon moved on to Pascal in high school and making horoscope machines and text-based adventures, moving on to Delphi, and then finally into Visual Basic 6. And then when I hit to uni, I learned dozens of programming languages I don't think I'll use anymore. But a quick selection might be C++, C Sharp, PHP, CGI, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Java, Prolog, Lisp Machine, and it keeps going from there. I've taught plenty of programming languages in high school before to year 11 to 12. And I personally find that Visual Basic is one of the best ones there because it's easy to learn and you can do it, you can start with console based programming, which we're going to do, and move all our way up into GUI programming without even having to change what we're using. Okay, so that's pretty much why I chose Visual Basic over other ones in the past, such as Java, uh, C, C, Sharp, and um, Pascal are the other ones that I've used in the past. I find this probably the nicest one there is. Okay, what I'm going to try and do during these practical videos is reference some of the theory videos that I've got to help you out to try and give you a bit of background knowledge because I think programmers always need a fair bit of background knowledge to become the best programmer they can possibly be. And the one thing I would love to ask of everybody watching these videos right now is to give me feedback. Okay, give us positive or some constructive feedback and even throw me some requests every now and again of videos that you would love to see. Okay. And that's our introduction to the series. So let's get into the actual video that I want to show you, which is an introduction to Visual Basic, show you how to install it, and we'll get it up and running for the very first time. Okay, This slideshow I'm about to show you is I want to play as a bit of an introduction to VB overall. So for the people who've never seen it before, first of all, it is known as visualbasic.net, or more affectionately known as just vb.net. Okay, it was first produced by Microsoft in and released in 2002. Okay, and it's used to create Windows applications, store applications, phone applications, and anything else that's sort of related to the Windows foundation. You, there are more things that it can make, but a lot of them are tied to Windows operating system environments. Okay, and the reason it's called Visual Basic.net is because it utilizes what's called the Microsoft.net framework for a lot of its functionality. I won't go into what the .NET framework is. I almost suggest you go and have a look at it yourself, but we will touch on that in later videos. Now, why Visual Basic? Why would I choose that? Well, realistically, the advantages is it's quick and easy to develop the applications, and it's an easy one to learn. Okay, I find that it's the easiest syntax to teach people. And finally, it's completely supported by Microsoft and a massive community of people who are behind Visual Basic, pushing it and helping others who are trying to use the same programming languages. Now, because I've shown you the advantages, I have to talk about the disadvantages. So one of the things about VB, and one that's highly contested, is it's slow when compared to other programming languages such as C++. Okay, that's not the point of using VB.net. The next one is it creates pretty large executable files, even for a tiny little program, which we'll see later on. Okay, Your programs that you make can easily be decompiled. To quickly explain what decompiling is, is taking your executable file and trying to turn it back into source code. Okay, See what you did to make your program. Okay, we won't go into that in detail. 
And finally, the computers that you put this program must have a matching .NET framework to run it. So in other words, we're developing in 2013, which uses what's called the .NET Framework 4.5. That means that the programs that we produce, if we take it to a friend's house, they must have the .NET Framework 4.5, or at least install it to use these programs. Okay? And to give you a little bit of background before we move on to how to install Visual Basic and all this, is a little bit of history. Okay, derived from the program BASIC, which I talked about earlier, in 1964, which was purely created to be an educational programming language. It wasn't efficient, it just, they just wanted to make it easy and get people programming nice and early. Okay, when we moved up to Visual Basic, it was released in 91. Okay, that was the very first version, and it was quick and easy to develop graphical-based applications. Okay, as those versions rolled on, it was originally just Visual Basic. It got up to version 6, which was last released in 98, okay, and is not supported anymore. Okay, so Visual Basic .NET then appeared in 2002 with the introduction of the .NET framework. Okay, that's a tiny bit of background history for you. I love, hope you like your history lessons. Okay, and I'd love to go into how you install or find and install Visual Basic. Now, the thing to note is that Visual Basic is not an application on its own. Okay, you don't go onto the internet and type in vb.net download. Okay, it doesn't work that way. Visual Basic actually comes in a suite or a massive application known as Visual Studio. Okay, and this was when Visual Basic.net released in 2002. Microsoft started doing this. Okay, in Visual Studio, it includes heaps of other programs such as C++, C++ C Sharp, uh, ASP.net, and more. Okay, so it's actually there's a lot of stuff you can do in Visual Studio. So we have to download that first to be able to use Visual Basic. Okay, the easiest way to access it is personally go to Google. Okay, you simply type in vb.net express. Okay, and this first link right here is going to be the easiest page, Visual Studio Express Edition. Okay, I know I searched for vb.net after telling you Visual Studio is the only one where it is, but it's just the easiest way to get to it. Now, what you have to do is pick your platform. Now, depending on how what you want to develop, okay, you might want to develop web applications. In that case, you would choose this. Okay, you might want to develop apps for the store. Okay, in that case, you would use this one here. And probably the easiest one to download would be this third one that you find here for Windows Desktop. Okay, and this is the one that we're going to use today. All right, so to download it, let's just click this button and let it do its thing. And on the left-hand side here, we have two options. We have the Windows Desktop Installer or we have the ISO file, it's called. Now, depending on which one you want to use, I've, I preference the DVD ISO image because we can download it once and install it multiple times, whereas this one, we have to download it every single time we install it. Okay, so the best way to go, I personally think, is select this ISO image one and let it go to the link. And one thing to note while it's loading is that Visual Studio 2013 only supports Windows 7 and Windows 8. It does not support Windows XP. If you have Windows XP, you'll have to download Visual Studio 2010 which you can download and use for this video series if you would like, okay? But you have to have Windows 7 or 8 for Visual Studio 2013. That's just how it is. Now, when I've clicked on this link, it's given me select which one I want to download. However, I must note that I've already logged in to my Microsoft profile. If it asks you to log in, log in with your Microsoft profile. If you don't have one, you'll have to make one from scratch, okay? And then you can log in and get to this page where I am, okay? Select this one on the left, the Express... 2013 for Windows Desktop, and it's going to start downloading your ISO image just there. I'm using Google Chrome, so it pops up down here. I'm actually going to cancel that because I've already downloaded it right here. Okay, so once it's downloaded, 808 meg, it's not too big actually for such a, an application. It's pretty good. What I'm going to do is Windows 7 and 8, we can simply double click on this file, and it looks like a CD for us. Okay. Double click on this and it's going to bring up the installer, which I think is probably the nicest installer I've ever seen Microsoft produce. Pick the place that you want to install this. Personally, I install things on my D drive and I like to put them in the apps folder. 
whoops, sorry. I'm going to have to create Microsoft Visual Studio 12. Okay, I'm going to agree to the terms. I am going to not agree with that one because I don't really want to. Click install and agree to it. All right. Now, this is going to take quite some time. I reckon about 20 minutes in total to install this entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'll come back at the end of this installation and then we'll go through our first run and that'll be it for this video. Okay, and welcome back. I'm actually finished, finally, after about 10 minutes. Okay, let's go into the first launch and see what we have here, everybody. Okay, let me just hop in here. Now, with this one here, it's actually requiring... It's really good to sign in though. It actually gives you lots of settings, like your own little what's called a um, team foundation server. Okay, it gives you your own web address from Microsoft's website. It's really good for group programming and things like that. It also allows you to connect, as it says, to online developer services and forums and things like that really easily. Personally, I'm going to skip this right now, and I'll come back to it at a later point, only because I'm at school and I'm behind a proxy, so it may not work if we do that. Okay, hopefully this doesn't take too long, otherwise I'll pause the video. Okay, and welcome to Visual Studio Express 2013, everybody. Okay, I'm not going to show off the interface, and I'm not going to show you how to program in this video. It was actually just to serve as an installation tutorial for the studio. Okay, what I probably suggest you do right now is go off, find all the updates you can for Visual Studio 2013, jam them in there because there'll be lots of different features and lots of different service packs that you can get with doing that. For the moment, thanks for watching the video. The next video, we're going to go through all an introduction to Visual Basic as a language, and we'll get programming, okay? Because I'm sure that's what you're here for. Thanks for watching. Give us some feedback in the bottom if you've got any, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Bye.